Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to fight this weekend in Alabama, SHP 58. Tristan, appreciate the time, man. Uh, obviously looking to continue to go undefeated in, in your mixed martial arts journey. Before we get there, how does this martial arts journey start? Uh, it started around, um, I mean, at a well, I start actually doing it around 17. Um, at the age of 17, I uh, started training until I got my first fight at 18 when I was an amateur. And um, ever since then, I just kept going. I, I've been wanting to do martial arts ever since I was younger when I was like kind of a baby, um, probably around like six or seven. But um, at the time, my parents didn't have enough money. And as soon as I turned 16, between 15 to 17, when I started having my own job and whatnot, that's when I started really doing what I wanted to do. And that was martial arts. What was there a particular discipline of martial arts that you were drew to the most? Well, just MMA in general. I mean, like I said before, and many other mom um, to many other people that I was the basic nerd. I, I just watched Kung Fu movies. Mm-hmm. I watched boxing I watched kickboxing and whatnot. And uh, I just fell in love with just martial arts in general. And then when I heard about like martial art, mixed martial arts around six to seven, I was like, okay, uh, I want to do this. So do you remember the first MMA fight that you saw? Now, don't quote me on this. I've, I've said this before, but I think the first MMA fight I saw was on, um, I think it was on Fox um, Sport Net back in the day. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. If, it was Vitor Belfort versus Chuck Liddell, I think. Don't quote me on it. Yeah. But it was a long, long time ago, around 2002, I think. Yeah. And yeah. um, and it it was, it was the realest type of martial art I've ever seen. I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. Now, did you play any other sports growing up? <laughs> to be honest, I did play other sports, but I really weren't good at any of them. Um, football didn't work. Basketball didn't work track and field i was eh but and i thank god i did track and field because um it helped me with my cardio that i have right now which i believe that i have i believe that i have the best cardio you know for right now now when you did track and field was there a particular event that was like your go-to event on 800 eight um usually the long distance um, runs and on the the long jump and sometimes just jumping events in general, but the long jump and long distance run like the 800 and the eight by um, the four by eight were my best ones that I love um, personally. Now looking at your amateur record now, I'm saying I'm guessing topology is correct, but I know they could be wrong. I know it happens as you as, you know, 10 to as amateur 12 amateur fights. That's kind of a, a lengthy amateur run, you know, you know, yeah. Was it just something where for you, it was just about, Hey, I'm just trying to get this experience in. I'm trying to, you know, make sure everything was where you wanted to be before you did make that launch in the pros. Well, yes. Experience was the biggest goal for me for my amateur career, because we didn't want a short, um, a short um, amateur career. We wanted a long lengthy amateur career where we had the best looks possible. Whereas um, we wanted wrestlers, we wanted a boxer, we wanted a striker, we wanted an athletic guy, we wanted a bruiser. We were just trying to find as much as experience as possible because not only did I did like, um, sorry about that, my bad. Um, if I can get the lights back on. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we got sensors for the lights, sorry. Uh, it's um, all good. But um, not only did I did the 10 and 2 for my MMA career, I also did the – um. The, did the boxing, I went 2-0 and in that, but that was a tournament. And mm-hmm. I also did um, the Muay Thai. Uh, I did Muay Thai, and um, I did 2-0 um, and with that because um, we were just trying to be, build experience in those type of disciplines so I can bring it towards my MMA career. So um, yeah, um, not only I did, like, um, it was 10, and 10 wins and 2 losses in MMA, it was 2-0 and in boxing and 2-0 and in Muay Thai as well. And a lot of jujitsu tournaments too. So and, I'll try to make it as possible. And then the pro debut comes in in, in June uh, of 2019. So you're you're approaching almost you know a year and a half, you know, close to two years here. Uh, in, in terms of the pro ranks, like as you think about you know where you were as a martial artist back in June of 2019 to where you're at now, what, what do you see as the biggest growth in, in your abilities? 
I see the biggest growth in my abilities is that I I just evolved off of my experience from it just me when it comes out of my biggest growth I evolve from just um from every fight that I do because I me I'm a perfectionist and I, I look over my fights all the time to see um what could I've done right there what could I've done right here should I faint more should I take more takedowns um should I back up and wait or should I take advantage of every opportunity that I see so my biggest um what helped me with my growth is just me being consistent on thinking that I've lost, even though I've won the fight, mm-hmm. I've lost in certain types of areas that I should have done better. So that what helps me with my growth from, you know, from that fighter from 2019 to 2021 fighter now. I, I would think, I would say, I think perfectionist is a an attribute that probably, if not um, all athletes, a majority of athletes do have. It, does it become tough for you when you do watch your own film? To where you sit there and say, okay, I know these are the things I got to, I got to, I got to work on this. Maybe in in this position, I got to move left instead of right. But do you also sit there and say, oh man, I did that well right there. Well, that's why I have a good team with me because um, sometimes my team, they'll like my teammates, my coaches, they'll look over my fights and they'll see, okay, so if I was fighting trust and bonds, what would I fight him with? And my coach always pinpoints, um, oh, if I was fighting you, um, if I was fighting you in this fight, I'll use this. Or my teammate, he'll might probably say a different type of opinion. Or, oh, if I'm fighting you in this fight, he'll um, fight me with this and whatnot. So not only do I find myself like trying to figure out ways to like if if I was winning this fight right here and if I was on um, if I was a different opponent and if I was that same person in that fight that I won that fight in. And they brought in, brought in a new guy all of a sudden. Um, okay, um, let's adjust and let's see if we can take trusting out with this. And that would help me in my, you know, in my um my gym just to help me boost my skills. Is that um, we have a good team behind me that knows. Okay, he's trying to um improve on this. Well, let me adjust this so I can help him improve on this. If that makes sense. I know that's a lot of yeah. going around a little bit. No, no, I, I get you. Uh, you know, peeking around on your Instagram, I, I saw that uh, when you signed with the management agency, you, you thanked Eric Anders for for yeah. his uh, his help. What was Eric meant for you in your career? Like for him to just invite me over to um to well for him, Chris Connolly and the the Spartan Fit, just the whole SBG crew. Uh, I thank them a whole lot for just having me on um, CrossFit over there to their gym and whatnot you know, just to get some good looks and everything. But Eric, for him to come out of nowhere and just, you know, wanting to sign me, uh, help sign me with Iridium and whatnot, it was a blessing. I mean, I, I've never had that happen to me before. I mean, it was shocking to me because I was thinking about just, you know, just fighting fighting only. And then if I do get a manager, okay. But for have somebody in the same exact backyard, you know, because – up, up the road, he's like an, a couple of hours up the road. And to have him say that, oh, I'm um, trusting, we want you to be a part of Iridium Sports, um, Sports Agency. I'm like, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. It, it was a blessing. And, and one word of all that, a blessing. <laughs> Uh, you know, but you got this fight come up here on Saturday. And as we're talking, you're you're two days from from stepping on the scale to to make way for this fight against uh, Cedric Johnson. Uh, you know, what's kind of uh, you know, what's your thought process heading into this fight? Spect- well, if anything, and you can kind of tell I'm kind of drained right now. I'm still <laughs> trying to go in weight cut, but if anything, spectacular consistency is what's going through my mind. Mm-hmm. Being consistent on certain opportunities and seeing pinpointing every specific detail that I can take advantage of is what I'm thinking about right now. Um, I'm not thinking about nothing else. I'm just trying to visualize, adapt, and overcome, and I'm just trying to see what I can do to express my skills and also express and um, bring to the table my will so I can use my will in order to win the fight, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I'm with you. For, For fans that this is their first time getting to hear, you know, you speak and learning about who you are, not just as a martial arts, but also as a person. What would you want those people to know about you? 
one thing that I want people to know about me is that I'm trying my best, my hardest to express who I am as a martial artist through what I do, my actions and how I bring myself. Um, one, one, one thing about me that I love um, that I do is that I'm not afraid to be different. I'm not trying to be like the typical tough guy. I mean, like you said, you've seen my Instagram on um, my Instagram page and you see most of all of the stuff that just resorted around anime on um, gaming and whatnot. I'm not afraid to use that type of art in order to express. Yep. <clears throat> hate this, hate this, hate this. Sorry. I'm not afraid to use that type of art to express who I am as a fighter. And I'm not afraid to just state what I want. So if anything, if somebody's the first time they watching me, I want them to know that I'm here to get legendary glory, phenomenal fortune. I'm not afraid to get there. And I'm not the type of person to shy away from any challenge. And if I do have like problems with the challenge, I'll go back to the lab, fix it, and then go back at it again. Have you offered up a challenge to your to yourself and what you want to accomplish this year? The same exact thing I've I've wanted this year so far as the the years before is just to be a better fighter and a better martial artist and a better competitor. I mean, because uh, if I I'm, I'm just starting right now at that small little detail, where well not just that small little goal where it can become a bigger goal down the road if that makes sense. Uh, I I just don't want to give myself a huge goal but it's a, a goal that is building like a foundation until i can get to that peak if that makes sense uh two final things uh kind of uh, non-fight related just kind of uh, lighten things up a little bit what's the app on your phone that you spend the most time on app on my phone uh, i'd say any random video game <laughs> If okay. if anything, any random video game, just keep myself occupied. If I'm not um working, if I'm not training, I'll just say any random video game. I mean, for starters, I was about to do like the um the Mario Kart racing on my yeah. video on my phone just a minute ago. But um other than that, um just any random video game and Instagram because I'm always trying to like, you know, look at small other other details of like techniques of how people do their um how they do their fighting style and how they um, approach fights and, and other ways um, to, you know, express myself by gaming, anime and whatnot. Uh, I know I'm just rambling on, but that's what I do. <laughs> well, yeah. You mentioned, you know, you mentioned obviously about training, you know, if, if the, the coaches aside, they say, you know what? Hey, you got, you got control of the music here in the gym today. What's going on what's going on the, uh, in the music? Well, one thing I will say, I'm going to turn on some, um, well, for starters, I love hip hop and I love rock. So okay. I'm probably going to have a jumbled up like rock hip hop. Yeah. So at first you'll see, hear Hollywood Undead. Then afterwards, you'll probably hear Run the Jewels or either Logic. And then I'll, all of a sudden you'll hear Slipknot. So if they give me the, the music, I'm probably going to turn something on between hip hop and rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get you, man. I get you. Yeah, when I uh, when I worked for a rock station here in Tampa, um, we we had a, a nationally syndicated show that that's basically they were there were two DJs and all they did was they they mixed up hip hop and and rock songs. Oh yeah, and it, it kind of um it kind of helps you get you a little bit motivated, um because sometimes rock gives you that inner that that razor sharp edge just to yeah. help you with um, you know just that push and then hip hop, it just, it just solidifies the whole entire thing. But other than that, yeah, uh, that's my music choices. Of course you got this fight come up here on Saturday night, SHP 58 there in Alabama. I appreciate Tom. Of course, let everyone know you can find on social media and anything else you want to mention, man, the floor is yours. Um, I'd like to thank my friends, my family, and also my cage for family for always being there for me. Um, they always, um, keeps me in good spirits and they always tell me that, whether you're trying to win this, whether you're winning a fight and whether you lose a fight, you still are trusting vines and you still will be phenomenal. 